Hey, girlies. A failing boxer takes a one in a million shot, but it doesn't go in his favour. Can he manage his new feminine reality? In Jue. Mario, as he was known among friends and fans, was the type of man who always took things head on without thinking too much about them. He was muscular and had rugged good looks. He had thick black hair which he kept messy and an almost permanent scowl on his face. He always spoke with a low gravelly voice. Mario was known for his quick thinking and equally quick fists. He had an impressive career with only a couple of losses under his belt. However, recently those losses were beginning to add up and Mario's fortunes were beginning to change for the worse. As time went on and Mario's performance in the ring began to wane, so did his money. He had invested a lot of his earnings into securing high-stakes fights, hoping to make big money. But as his losses began to add up, so did his debts. One day, Mario was approached by an old friend with an offer that was too good to refuse. Mario, I know you're down on your luck right now, but I've got something that might just turn things around for you. He said with a grin, his eyes sparkling with mischief. Mario eyed him sceptically as he leaned back on his bar stool. He took a swig from his beer and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. What's this all about? Mario asked cautiously. Well, I've got this underground fight coming up and I thought you might want to participate, his friend said with a glint of excitement in his eyes. Why do you think I'd want to participate in something like that? Mario asked, his curiosity piqued. Because, Mario, this fight will change your life forever. If you win, you'll walk away with a million dollars tax-free, his friend said with an excited grin. Mario's eyes widened at the mention of a million dollars. He was well aware that underground fights paid a lot more than regular ones did, but he didn't know it paid that much. What's the catch? Mario asked sceptically. Well, there's only one rule, Mario, you can't lose this fight no matter what. And if you do happen to lose, you'll have to become our ring girl, his friend said with a laugh as if it was a joke. But Mario knew better than to think anything was ever that straightforward. Mario took a moment to think it over. On one hand, the idea of making a million dollars was very tempting, but on the other hand, there was always the chance he could lose and be forced to transform into a ring girl. All right, Mario finally said with a nod. His friend let out a whoop of excitement and Mario couldn't help but join in. Mario's fight was scheduled for a week later and he spent that time training as hard as ever. He didn't want to take any chances with losing this fight and the million dollars that went with it. The day of the fight finally arrived and Mario stepped into the ring with a sense of purpose. His opponent was a towering mountain of a man, but Mario wasn't afraid of him. The fight started, and it was clear that Mario's opponent was just as tough as he looked. They exchanged punches for several rounds, both men landing blows that would have knocked out anyone else. As the fight wore on, Mario could feel his energy beginning to wane. He knew he had to end it soon or risk losing everything. He put all his energy behind a one final uppercut, but his opponent had foreseen this. He took a step back, dodging Mario's uppercut, and landed a clean one. Mario found himself on the ground with the refree counting by his side. He tried to get up with all his power, but there was nothing left. Mario was helped out of the ring and onto his feet as his friend came over to congratulate his opponent with a pat on his back and some words of encouragement before turning back to Mario with an apologetic shrug. Sorry, Mario, but them's the rules. He said with sympathy but also with an air of amusement at Mario's misfortune. Mario could barely contain his anger and frustration as he stood there seething with fury at himself for losing such an important fight and also at his friend for getting him into this mess to begin with. Put this on, his friend said as he handed him a low-cut T-shirt. Once he had the T-shirt on, his friend handed him a small pink pill. The crowd started cheering and chanting, Take it! Take it! They were more abused by the spectacle that was about to ensue than the fight itself. He knew that there was no way out of this for him. He had to take the pill. He took a silent breath and swallowed the pill. Suddenly his world started turning. He wasn't sure what was real and what was a dream. It felt like something was crawling under his skin, 
he felt as if his organs were being rearranged. Suddenly his chest started burning. He could feel his chest poking through his shirt. Were they growing or was he imagining this? After this he got a sharp pain between his legs. It felt as if his manly bits were being pulled inside. It was all too much for him to handle with the tiredness from the fight and the transformation. He blacked out. A few moments later he woke up to the sound of the crowd cheering. Maria, Maria, his friend approached him and said we do love our ring girls here. He gestured his man to assist Maria to the changing room. As they helped Maria walk, she could feel the new weight on her chest bouncing with every step. It felt unusual. Not as unusual as the emptiness down where his manly bits used to be, however. Once she sat on one of the benches, the men left her alone to change and process what had happened. As she sat in the changing room, tired from getting beat up and the transformation, she inspected the changes in the mirror. She felt like she had become shorter. Her skin felt smooth. Her hips were so wide that she had that perfect hourglass figure. And finally, her chest. They had grown to a size where even baggy clothes could not hide them. She could feel their weight on her chest as she rested. After the crowd died down, his friend came to visit him in the changing room. Listen, Maria, he said. She was not used to hearing the feminine version of her name. You work for us now. We have a one-year contract for you to work here. You will live in the building with all the other ring girls. They will teach you the ropes. Your first show is in two days. In just two days, Maria had learned to walk like a girl with high heels and how to flaunt her body on stage with grace and elegance while holding up giant numbered cards for announcing which boxer was entering which round of a match. Maria was both nervous and excited as she stepped out onto stage for her first performance as a ring girl. The bright lights shone down on her as she took her place on stage next to another ring girl who gave her an encouraging smile and nod of approval. Before they both began to strut and sway to the music that was playing over the loudspeakers while holding up their giant numbered cards high above their heads. To announce that it was time for round one of this boxing match that was taking place between two men who were both much taller and more muscular than she was. As Maria moved across the stage, she felt her body swaying back and forth with each step she took, as if it were trying to find its natural rhythm after being transformed. From being male to being female just days earlier during that underground boxing match that had led to her being forced into becoming one of these beautiful ring girls. One of the men that was fighting that night was the same man that had got the better of her a couple of nights ago. Oh, how she had wanted him to lose. Unfortunately, the stakes were much lower for this match. A spectacle as big as she had went through only occurred once or twice every year. And much to her dismay, he was doing just fine. The guy that had beaten her, Sergio, was doing just fine. Both sides had taken a beating, but she could tell that Sergio's opponent didn't have anything left to give. Just as she was analysing Sergio, she was cued in to present the fifth round. She put up a big smile, swayed her hips and held the card above her head. She could tell all the man in the room, all the eyes were on her. More importantly, she could tell Sergio's eyes were on her. She felt like a prey. Sergio was a cheater and she was a gazelle. As she exited the ring, Sergio's eyes were still on her. This round was quick, as she had predicted Sergio's opponent was weak. It took only one uppercut for him to go down. With Refree's countdown, the girls rushed into the ring. Now their job was to make Sergio feel like the winner. They rushed in to pose with Sergio. As Maria stood next to him, she realized how much taller he was than her now. Sergio's build really made her feel small. His friend cued her and the other girl to hold up Sergio's hand and declare him the winner. As she did that, she could feel how vascular and manly Sergio's hands were. There was something about a man that had just defeated his opponent and stood tall and proud in all his manly glory. And there she was as the prize. As she was about to leave, Sergio pulled her by her waist and pulled her close. Now she could smell her manly stench. His musk had turned her on for some reason. Was this her life now? Had her brain chemistry changed? As she looked him in the eyes, she couldn't help but fall in love with him. Sergio was looking directly into Maria's eyes. Without uttering a single word, she knew that he wanted her. 
his gaze had done something to her. As she walked out of the ring, she could not help but think about Sergio. When she got back to the living quarters, girls could tell what happened to Maria. The same had happened to them, so they knew too. Whatever pill she was given was strong enough to change her brain chemistry permanently. There was no going back. She was now attracted to the same kind of man she once strived to be. Was that so bad after all? Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to follow us on other social media. Enjoy your girly day.